check on myself. I gotta check on myself. I gotta check on myself. Look at my pants, look at my tats. I gotta check on myself. Yeah, I'm verified, fly like oh my god. I gotta check on myself. All right, yeah, what's up, man? Good afternoon. Um, big shout out to Breativity, first of all, for yeah, having yeah. us, man. Having us, I appreciate the love. Uh, my name is Dirty White. This is my boy, Breeze Davis. Breeze Davis. Uh, we come all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina to be here with y'all today. Um, had to roll down here and spread the love a little bit, push the brand, push the music, you know what I mean? Been meeting a, been meeting a lot of talented people, a lot of interesting people, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a great culture here in Atlanta that actually allows you, like, you know what I'm saying, you be able to expand and, like, go beyond you know what i mean like you don't hear people like from around where i'm from other than j cole you know what i'm saying like they just yeah. make it out their city like but you can be from atlanta and make it you know what i mean and that's a crazy that's that's something that i think is really dope but yeah yeah hit that ball and cheat you say what now <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so it was a dude it was a dude i was working with um because i used to work in a print shop print t-shirts um and it was a dude in the shop that was like this old head and he it was a song by foreigner called dirty white boy and uh, he came in the shop one day, and he was he pointed right at me. He's like, "Yo, I got a song for you." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And so he plays it on a loudspeaker. He's like, "This is you, man." You know what I'm saying? And the whole song, oh, "I'm a dirty white boy," and I hated it. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like, I'm not gonna sit here in front. Like for a good solid year and a half, I fought that name. You know what I'm saying? Like to <laughs> tooth and nail. Like I could don't call me dirty white, man. That's not you know what I'm saying. Ha ha ha. Yeah, you funny, bro, but don't call me that. But after a while, I was just like, I got like nicknames are given. They earn. They not you know what I'm saying? Like I can't think That's of my own so nickname. Nice. Yeah, like that's, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, it made perfect sense. Like, you know, I was already scheming on the dreads at the time and just, you know what I'm saying, covered with a bunch of shitty tattoos and everybody was just like, <laughs> still a bunch of this shitty guy, tattoos. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, poor city, man, Wilmington. We from, we from North Carolina, man. I go to school in North Carolina, so I'm originally from Florida, Jacksonville, Florida and shit. And I uh, moved to Carolina to go to film school. We used to have a lot of film where we from. And uh, so they got a lot of opportunities out there for film. So I moved out there to kind of get with camera work and then linked up with some other artists out there and started pursuing music out that way, too. So, yeah, I got actually got like two credit hours and then I'm done. So his shit fire, uh, man. He, uh, that was actually how I found him. Ended up being because um, I was I was in the basement at my boy's house, like trying to get my sound right. You know what I mean? Trying to figure out what I wanted to do as far as like what vibes I was going for, and what I was capable of. And uh when I finally decided it was ready to start pushing real hard, like he was one of the first cats in Wilmington that I linked up with because I, you know, kind of searched like videographer, like the local hip hop scene, you know what I'm saying, to see what was really popping. And um, he's one of the first names to come up. It turns out we just vibe really well. So we're not a group or nothing. We just make hella music together. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't like. It's uh, I mean, we're, we're a small city. We're a college town, man. So. So it has a lot of, um, you know what I'm saying? It has potential to be big and be dope because we got all those college kids there, man. And there's so much, like, versatility. But uh, it's an indie rock city, man. It's a hipster <laughs> city, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's real hipster. So, like, like I guess, you know, like the indie beers. rock scene kind of <laughs> running, man. And that's a small hip-hop scene. It's super supportive. Like, everybody support each other. There's just not enough venues that can hold the type of stuff that we need to really make any bread or do anything out there that's lucrative. You know what I mean? So it's a bunch of it's a bunch of craft IPAs and two man bands singing soul, you know, singing folk yeah, songs. And like it. you can get a gig if you got an acoustic guitar and a bongo. You know, there's what I'm a saying? lot of beards and uh, and fedora hats in yeah, our city and stuff. That's, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. It, man. People with their yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People with their jeans rolled up, you know what I mean? Play me a play me some reggae or but something. But it's cool, man. It's real. It's different. You got you got some of everything now, man. And I'm telling you that college, man. I mean, North Carolina's a college state anyways, man. That's what we're known for. So, you know, that brings a lot of people there, man. So Well, I mean, as far as like we got, you know, PD Pablo, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, but yeah, as far as like, yeah, local area, like the Ville is like a good suit, you know, so we got like De Niro, we got De Niro away. for yeah. we got Colt Rap in, yeah. in uh in Charlotte, this kind of bubbling. I mean, the baby doing, doing his little thing too right now. You yeah, know the what I'm saying? He caught that body, that shit. <laughs> it's a dub for the baby. He about to blow up now. You know what I'm saying? But it's, that's Charlotte. Yeah, that's Charlotte, Charlotte. the baby, yeah. Uh... So well, at the beginning of the summer, I say, uh, what was it? Probably like June, June or July. I dropped. Uh, I did. I did a joint with Scotty ATL from down here called. Shout Bobby out Scotty, by the way. Then uh, we shot the video up there. He came up to Carolina, where we from. We shot the video up there, and then we dropped it. I think in. I want to say the end of the summer. So you could find that on World Star. You could find that on YouTube. Michael Jackson. No, not um. Who is it? Michael Jordan's uh, mamas. Yeah, mom's yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, yeah, the, we rented out Michael the place, Jordan's mama's The spot that we got to shoot that video at. Yeah, bro. It, it was dope. Oh my god. But you can find that anywhere, man. YouTube, World Star, all types of places, Ball and Ball Chill. Ball and Chill. Reese Davis, Scotty ATL. So 
And that's the mission for this year, man. As many visuals as we can in the travel, man. To travel and hit different cities, network, you know what I'm saying, make some uh, business relationships that are, you know what I'm saying, can advance us in the future. So I can't stay away from the music though, man. I spend so much time in the lab, like it's ridiculous. Like it's really healthy to come out here and blend with other people and like, you know what I'm saying, pay attention to opportunities that have you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just exist in the lab. Like, as much as I want to, you know what I mean, to have somebody pay me and just be creative in the lab all He's day. He's a studio rap. You know what I mean? Like, side. I love, you know what I mean? Like, I swear to God, like, I, I make my own beats. You know what I mean? Like, I sing my own hooks. Like, I do Drake better than Drake do Drake. You know what I'm saying? And, like, <laughs> I'm not even sitting here, like, trying to, I'm not even capping right now, but it's just, like, I, I do all the different parts of it. You know what I mean? Like, I've got him on beats that I made myself. He's got me on beats that... He has either got, you know, his, his like, DJ Kells. Shout out DJ Kells. He makes some beats for us and stuff like that. But uh, I'm working on right now um, a full-length studio project, um, 12-ish, 12-ish tracks probably. Um, that's all going to be pretty much R&B, man, because uh, I was into the trap shit real hard. Honestly, I be on my PMB rock shit sometimes. But it's just like um, I'm actually bringing something to the table that's like all original. It's all, you know what I'm saying? It's all self-produced. It's all self-written. Like I'm probably throw a cover in there or two, you know what I'm saying, just for the sake mm -hmm. of, you know, play playability or whatever. But um, you guys be looking out for that, man. I'm going to call me when you get this is what I'm what I'm titling that project. I've already got the first uh, the first single is called Reasons. Um, I got a rough um, unmixed, unmastered version on my SoundCloud to tease everybody with, but uh, which is a good way. Um, to transition, by the way, just for the record, um, please go look up our music, man. Go listen to the studio, studio versions of our shit. Like we, we go hard. We say we say a lot of different shit. Like we don't, we not, we not bullshit rappers. You know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect to anybody that you know what I'm saying. Whoever makes music in the way that they want to make it, that's cool. But I, we be saying shit like when we rap. We like both we actually, have a wide you know range, like, man. Yeah, so like we can't. both we both don't stick to like one formula or one style. Both of us can do a whole lot of different stuff, and I think that's what puts us where we are, at least in our city, man. Is we're able to touch a lot of different demographics because we can do yeah. different stuff, man. I could go to a, I could go to a show downtown and you know do a ten minute set of nothing but hard bar trap shit. Turn right around two days later, go to a wedding. You know what I'm saying? And be covering John Mayer. Like I'm not even playing. Like this shit crazy. It's but, business, man. That's, yeah, that's what I'm so saying. Well, go look us up, man. Yeah. Dirty White. I'm on Spotify, SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? YouTube. I'm on all the. You could even Shazam my music. Like if you hear my music playing, yeah, all, all platforms, platforms, iTunes, everything. Dirty White, man. You can. Uh, title. Yeah, title as we a matter of fact. Yeah, Barry Davis is the same way. You can type that in. Um, we got Barry Davis on everything, all mm -hmm. the social medias, all the streaming sites, and it'll pull up everything. Yeah. Man, Dirty F White. Try to make sure that all the links are scattered around. You know what I mean? So any given platform that you land on, you're gonna be able to find links to other places. Mm, nah, nah, we nah. Been we've here. been here a few times now. Nah. Yeah, do. definitely. It's pretty dope. Uh, I think the weather better. I think <laughs> I we try think, to stay busy when hey, we're here, man. Like we try to have reasons to be here when we're here, so there's no downtime. If we come yeah. down here, we want to be doing stuff constantly and stay productive. So. Always moving, man. Go, go, go. Right, you, hey. you might as well hit that one. I'm the old one, man. I've been around for a while. <laughs> he the young one, man. I ain't even gonna say my age, but I'm up there. So I, I've been doing it for a lot of years, man. I've been, you know, what I'm saying I was in high school. I was doing it then, man. I've got 20 plus years invested in in doing music, man. It's just always stuck with me. So at this point, man, like I've kind of, I'm still pushing my music and doing my thing, but I've also stepped back and look at other outlets like camera work and production and engineering, pushing my homeboys and helping them. So like it's, you know, yeah, it's just a major, a major, a major cog in the wheel. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when you don't have to outsource all your shit, when you have, exactly. you know what I mean? A majority of your like, I got to shout out people, even though I don't really fuck with his music, like Russ is a good example of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Completely self-produced. You know what I mean? Like there's a, a number of artists in the game who are able to cover all their bases and you, you know what I'm saying? The amount of like. Once you do get on and your money start coming in, the amount of money that you're going to retain, you know what I mean, because of your masters and because of, you know, what I mean? the amount of effort that you put into creating your own brand and creating mm -hmm. your own product. But uh, I just I don't know. It was a weird transition because like he he started in hip hop and it stayed true to hip hop the whole time. I'm from Boom Boom Ch and that, Punch right, Lines, right, back, you know what yeah, I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, like I had to backtrack to find this music. You know what I mean? Like when I started listening to hip hop, like Lil Wayne was in full effect. You know what I mean? So I had to backtrack and listen to all the, you know what I mean? Go back and find Goody Mob. Go back and find Big L. Go back and find, you know what I mean? All this and do that. But because I started singing in church. I mean, that was that was my side of it. I mean, believe it or not, like I was a little church kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had the little suit and tie on at six years old. You know what I mean? Like playing piano in church. And uh, when I finally got old enough and I started to, you know what I'm saying, see the world in a little different, a little different way than I started to see it before. And it started to occur to me that, you know what I'm saying, I always love poetry and I love music, but I never realized that those two things could intersect as amazingly mm -hmm. as they do 
with hip hop. You know what I mean? Like when I discovered hip hop, I was like, oh my God. I was like, so you telling me oh <laughs> that I can do this and do this and you know what I'm saying? And do it at the same time. And, and so I can literally be a poet and create, you know what I mean? I don't have to sing no hymn. I'm, 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 I'm writing some bars or something. And so it's been a gradual progression because, you know what I'm saying? Having that soul in me, having that gospel background adds a whole nother dimension to the sound that I'm able to come up with. This is one thing that uh, he fucks with. It's like when he first started fucking with me was the fact that I start putting like soulful vocals on trap music, you know what I mean? And we all started losing our minds and like we started developing this the sound where we're from, you know what I mean? And that's that's, a lot that's more... another thing too. We we both writers, man. So we write when we're in the studio. We start with a writing process before we even touch the booth, before we even do any of that. Like I, I put a lot of emphasis on writing. I feel like nowadays a lot of artists just kind of jump in the booth and then they solely rely on the engineer. Off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with it, but like. We sit down and we build. We build the concept, the structure, you know what I'm saying? We write the song. We put work into the bars. Like, the song is done before we even step in the booth, man. All the engineer got to do is press record and hit a little EQ and compression, and we're good. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, we start from scratch and put a lot of emphasis on writing, man. So, like, content is important to us, too, man. I ain't mean to cut you off. I Definitely. just, you know no, what I'm no, saying? No, I feel that. That's, no, you, you was going the same way. I mean, Breeze has Breeze got, a, uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying, projects on Man, projects. Yeah, I mean, mixtape I mean, after coffee mixtape after mixtape. Coffee tape, and man. Cigarettes is a phenomenal project. Um, coffee and Cigarettes is my last EP, that, like solo bro, EP that like, I dropped last the most year, soulful man. shit, like a bunch of jazz piano samples and type of shit, like the type of shit that make you want to ride around the city at 2 in the morning and smoke weed in the car. I grew up like, on Cast from, and Good and Mob, man. So right. like like soulful, funk, like, you know what I mean? But it has to have a soul element to it and it's got to have content. If it's soulless, I can't listen to it. Yeah, yo, yeah, Chris, yeah. one of my favorite rappers, if that puts, you know what I'm saying? Like Heavy that, bass, that's my element, snappy man. snares, and really soulful samples and shit, yeah. I got to feel it. Balance of content and soul is important to me, man, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you blend that with trap, that's where the beauty starts happening, because I, like, I can't get over trap drums. Like, I just love trap mm -hmm. drums so much, and so I started mixing. So then that's, uh, I've dropped a total of uh, four different projects, two of them early on that probably aren't even online anymore, that don't really matter, but my two most recent ones, I got one called Last Resort. Um, it was an eight-song project. It's really trappy and really soulful. Like, there's even one song on there where I sing nine-part harmony, you know what I'm saying, on a trap song. Like, you're never going to hear that shit other than, you know what I'm saying, T-Pain. And... Oh, man. There you go. God damn. Uh, look, I'm a, well, first of all, I want to say I'm blessed to have the opportunity to work with um, somebody that I've been a fan of for a while. He's still kind of, I say relatively underground, but his name is STS. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Sugar Tum Slim. He's from right here in, uh, in Atlanta. Um, I'm actually supposed to be hitting the studio with him a little later today to put some shit down. So that's definitely like that's one of those dream come true type shits. Um, as far as like industry artists, man, I'm trying to get a good solid verse out of Cole. Obviously, I'm trying to get a good solid verse out of I don't know. Royce to five nine, you know what I mean? Like, let me get a little Jay Critch. Like, let me get a, <laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, I could throw that whole list together. I know you just what, UGK? No, stop. <laughs> yeah, give me the bumpy. I want a side high feature. Side high, what's oh, up? Yeah, man? and side high, yeah. I want a side high and a crib feature, man. But that's 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 future. That's in the future, man. There's so many artists that I would like to work with in game. Lido, Star Lido. Mm -hmm. I want a Star Lido feature, man. That would be dope. I I want like when it comes to features, man, and, and this you is probably sound good with Don Tripp. Yeah, Trip and Lido, man. But like, I want to work with artists that like I fuck with. Like, Cloud is mm -hmm. cool and all that, and I get it. But like, the I'm vibe. not going to get a feature for. I'm not paying for a feature from an artist if I don't even fuck with your music. Right. Just for Cloud, like Same. that. Yeah. I can't do that. So I want to fuck with artists in the circle of music that I feel like I make that I relate to. So you know what I'm saying? That's how I try to keep it when I'm looking for features or working in that lane. So. <laughs> I don't really understand the whole clout thing. I mean, I get it. I, I get I get it and I understand why it's important. Hey. But when you're chasing clout and money and everything else goes out the window and it's solely about clout, then it's a popularity contest, man. Hey. I don't care nothing about that shit, Clout man. really is as dangerous I'm as drugs, business, though. That's man. crazy I want money. as hell. Because think about what fiends would do for drugs. You know what I'm saying? Think about what fiends would do for drugs. Bruh. Yeah, man, they be fiending for like, it, man. These these people, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying you're not using your platform for good. It's whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go that far, but I know right now it's some people that's itching and scratching. You take their phone away from them, them twelve thousand followers that they got, they gotta see a selfie today. You understand? <laughs> like you're not about it. You know what I mean? It's really motherfuckers out here like that. Like I'm not against social media by any means, but the ironic part about what you said is, yeah, it really is like drugs. Like people will do anything for that it's, shit. It's a catch twenty two. If I didn't rap and I wasn't involved in music, I probably wouldn't have social media. I'm just being real. I wouldn't give useful. a shit about it's it. It's a tool. But, you yeah, know what I mean? If you know what I mean, we gotta utilize it. So I ain't gonna like I'm perfect. You know what I'm saying? But like, who? Stay sane. 
<laughs> I mean, in my opinion, that's really the crazy part is, like I said, I've only been pushing, pushing music to the public and pushing music in general for probably not, you know, going on maybe four years now because I didn't take it. I didn't take the idea of having a career in music seriously. And I know that sounds sad, but it's just like to that point in time, it was like my daily medicine. You know what I mean? It was my Ativan. It was my, you know what I'm saying? It was my Adderall. It was my Valium. It was my whatever that people take, you know what I mean? To be able to function during the day and not rip people's heads off. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And I could put my pen, you know, I could put my pen to the pad. I could go in the booth and sing some shit and I'd be straight for the rest of the day. It didn't matter if I only showed it to me and three homies. You know what I mean? Like that was the, you know what I'm saying? That's all that mattered. But then people started digging the vibe. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, I'm going to not. A little encouragement helps. You know what I mean? We got a big support going, system fire, in our bro. city, man. You know There's a mean? lot of people that are behind us and that push behind yeah. us. And I think, I think me and him have very similar work ethics. Like, you know, there's not, there's not to, we just mesh very well on how we do business. So, so we motivate each other in a sense too, where it, where it's almost a healthy competition. If he's working harder than I am for a week, That's I'm gonna not be cool, pissed, right? and he I mad. gotta step like, my oh, game damn, up. Dirty, doing and all we're gonna talk shit here. to each other and keep each other in place right. like that, man. But I feel like with that competitive energy, man, it's just consistent. It's never gonna change because we're always trying to outdo or outshine. And what happens in the end is we're just both working super Twice as hard much work and trying done. to outwork right. everybody else, man. So like that works for us, and that's kind of what we do. I'm trying to grind my crib got a helipad on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, go hear that, Mr. D. I was gonna be shallow. I was Man. just gonna say a whole bunch of money shit. Well, that's, I mean, but the thing is, is like that. I mean, that's part of it. You know what I mean? But like, to me, I guess success is more about like success is more about like being able to being able to spend the majority of your time doing shit that you love. That's the most successful that you can be, in my opinion. So at that point in time, yeah, the money do tie in. I ain't gonna front like I'd be mad if somebody walked up to me with a Billy signing check right now. You know what I mean? But that's not the reason I do this shit, because like I just said, I was doing it in the basement for myself long before anybody, you know what I mean? So like at the end of the day, if I can pay my bills, if I walk on and I flip my switch, I turn my coffee maker on, all that shit work, and all I had to do was be in the studio, that's complete success right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't got to live in, you know what I'm saying, Hollywood Hills, like put me in a duplex on damn, you know what I'm saying? Put me in a duplex in Costa Rica. We're all looking for financial freedom at the end of the day, man. Everybody don't want to live check to check. Money is important, man. But at the end of the day, you want to be content too. Have all the money in the world. If you work in a job you don't like, you ain't never going to be happy with that shit. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. But we all want money at the end of the day, man. So we're all chasing that check, man. But it's like you got to find your own level of contentness, man. So with what I got now, I'm happy every day I'm working. You know what I mean? I'm content. So in a sense, I'm successful, man. And when the next thing happens, I'm just happy the next thing happens. So it doesn't matter. I feel like successful is wherever you're content at. You know what I mean? Well, the, the irony, and I love that word. I keep saying irony. I say irony every like five minutes. But the <laughs> irony about that is the fact that you can't let success dampen your hunger. That's the biggest thing for me is that when you say how do you define success, part of me doesn't even want to define success because, I mean you know, all atheism and Christianity aside, what is the end of the ride? You know what I mean? If you haven't had damn fun on a journey. That's true. You know what I mean? At that point in time. So if you're going to define success by something that you, you know, arrive at after X amount of effort, that's cool. But the point is once you've arrived, you know what I mean? At what point do you, your incentive begins to dim? You know what I mean? Like you're at the point in your life where, well, I'm successful. You know, what else do I have to know? Fuck that. I'm always looking for the next album. There's always the next move, man. I mean, we came so far in a year, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, where what we've done in a year last year we would have never thought we'd have done mm-hmm. all this shit and now we're looking at it like damn we got so much more shit to do so you know artists, yeah it just makes you hungrier the more you the more you put there's always the next play man always boom um um i'm dirty f white the f is for phenomenal um but you can find me on <laughs> you can find me on twitter <laughs> you're gonna find you can find me on twitter you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook and SoundCloud. All four of those platforms are the same, Dirty F White. Um, once you hit Spotify, iTunes, it just changes. It's just Dirty White, all one word. I'm Breeze Davis on everything, man. You can Google. I'm also part of a squad called Ski Mask League. Ski? Um, you can Google Ski Mask League, one word. It's going to pull up videos, everything else. And we're under the same management blanket, Stay too. Rooted Stay music Rooted group. Music Group. So you can look up Stay Rooted Music. I think it. Stay rooted, stay rooted music group dot X Y Z, mm-hmm. and that will take you to our webpage, which also has links our to all of our music and, and videos. Our, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much a central hub. Which all there are going to be, you know, obviously individual Dirty White and Breeze Davis pages that are currently being created. He just dropped a video work. called Seasons Change. You can mm-hmm. find it on YouTube. Oh, all yeah. and chill with yeah. me and Scotty ATL. You can find Grady. it on YouTube. Shout out King Grady, mm-hmm. shoots videos. Um, 
Yeah, Seasons Change is a dope one, man. Let me talk about that for a second. Um, Seasons Change video, like I said, is filmed by Keem Grady. We shot for zero budget other than just paying for the edit, you know what I mean, and the photography and all that. And um, it turned out to be a really, really dope visual. Had a lot of lights, you know what I'm saying? Had a lot of dope outdoor scenery, you know what I'm saying? Just the general shade of the entire video is just... It's really phenomenal. I had to plug that real quick. Keem did a great job of putting that video together, and uh, it's a really meaningful song. You know what I mean? It's produced by Sorrow Beats, this guy that uh, the guy that I was talking to, and uh, talks about like the dynamics between relationships and artists. You know what I'm saying? How so much time goes into your craft that a lot of times we feel like we neglecting the people around us. You know what I'm saying? Like we letting shit go because we spend so much time doing what we doing what we say we love. You know what I'm saying? But it's 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 a it's a dope song, man. I have to say that. Dirty White Seasons Change. You can oh, find yeah. that on YouTube. It's, it's definitely worth the watch. We're going to be back down here, I believe, on the 7th of yeah. December. Everything is not locked in yet. If you follow us on those sites, man, we'll have a flyer. We're trying to get back down here on the 7th for a showcase. And then also on the 14th, we're trying to get on a showcase. We were just talking some business on this mm -hmm. morning. So Vision Studios is on the 7th. And then uh, I just want to show that's got to do with Scotty somehow on the 14th. we got to lock that down. But uh, those are the two upcoming dates. We had a show last month at uh, Smith's Old Bar, actually, as part of A3C. And um and that was pretty that was we pretty phenomenal. We promote heavy on Instagram, so yeah. follow the Instagram and all the flyers mm -hmm. and whatnot. We'll be there, but we will yeah, be back down here in December. Keep a super active social media presence. All you got to do is follow us, and you'll you'll hear all the news. Man, I don't know. I'm gonna recommend him a song for you. You recommend him a song for me. <laughs> you want to hear? You want to hear Breeze Davis? You want to hear Breeze Davis in rare form? Um, I'm gonna say picture me here, probably. Picture that's me that's dope. probably Visual my, my best it. example, yeah, of like some really like introspective like hip hop that's that has to do with more, you know what I'm saying? Picture me here, you can find that on YouTube for the yeah. visual too, man. Um, Picture me here is a good ass man. song, bro. I swear. Dirty, dirty's dope, man. Check out Play Too Much. Play Too Much is gonna give you a, a a good variety of what he can do, man. There's also a visual for that on YouTube, man. But once you hear Play that, you much. find this man where it's everything really, sounds yeah. different, so it's you really get a taste of everything, man. Piece of poetry, like I'm a poet, you know what I'm saying? Like from from down from down deep inside. So play too much is a whole. It's a whole poet, and ain't, ain't, ain't even got no hook. Like it's just one solid bar. It talks about some some real heavy shit, man. The type of shit that you gotta you gotta be by yourself when you listen to it. You know what I'm saying? And pay attention. Oh yeah. Shout out to everybody down here. I appreciate you having us on too, man. It's a great opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah. upcoming, damn right. You're gonna see our you're gonna see us, trust me. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate oh, yeah. you, man. Appreciate oh, you yeah. having us out here and shit, man.